Greetings, Taku Faithful. Thank you for joining me again this week. Once again, it's Larry Williams, OAW Commander in Chief, and I'm going to bring you all yet again another The Flash episode review right here on Otaku Assemble. Weekly, and as always, going to bring you the latest in this week's The Flash episode review. And this is my review of Season 2, Episode 21, entitled The Runaway Dinosaur. Now, general thoughts on this week's episode. By far the weirdest episode of The Flash. The weirdest episode in the season thus far. And this was definitely a WTH episode. And when I say WTH, I don't mean what the hell. I mean what the huh? There were multiple head scratchers in this week's episode. And I'll get into more detail about each one throughout this review. So, okay. So in this week's episode, we pick up right where we left off from last week's episode after Barry seemingly disintegrated into thin air right in front of everybody. And, of course, given the preview for this episode, there was some speculation about what we would be dealing with, whether Barry went to another time period or whether he went, you know, was transported to another Earth or maybe even another dimension. We found out in this week's episode, Barry was actually abducted by the Speed Force. And I say abducted because, you know, it, it wasn't just a matter of, oh, Barry sort of got lost or he got trapped by the Speed Force. No, he was abducted. Why? Because apparently the Speed Force is sentient and it is composed of a collection of individual consciousnesses. Like, it's really weird. So apparently the Speed Force is a sentient being or a collection of sentient beings and they abducted Barry and are holding him hostage or at least it seems that way until we get halfway through the episode when we discover Barry can actually leave and return back home at any point in time. So meanwhile, while that's going on, one of our villains from last season has become a zombie and is running amok in Central City, leaving the rest of the team to have to deal with him. Meanwhile, Jesse and Wally, we get to see them after they've been exposed to the particle accelerator explosion. Jesse is comatose, Wally is fine, and all of this sort of accumulates. It all ends with Barry finally returning back to Central City with his powers and whatnot. Okay, so that says that's pretty much the episode in a nutshell. Now I'm going to go ahead and dwell into some of these what the hun situations. Okay, first and foremost, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Homeboy coming back as a zombie totally didn't work in my opinion. Another throwaway villain, another throwaway conflict for seemingly what could have been another throwaway episode. Um, yeah, that totally came out of nowhere. I don't remember what the explanation behind it was, nor do I even recall if there was an explanation behind it. But the fact that, oh yes, the particle accelerator explosion caused one of the corpses that was in the morgue in Star Labs. So, number one, I still can't believe they haven't cleared out Eobar Thorne's sort of um, autopsy room. Like, the fact that they haven't done that. So, yeah, homeboy gets affected by the uh, particle accelerator explosion and turns into a zombie. What the huh? How does that even work? And the fact that he apparently was such an issue, such a problem for the rest of the team to deal with without Barry. And Barry had to come in at the last minute at the end of the episode and save the day once again. What the huh? He's a zombie, yes, so he has metahuman abilities. Still, you beat him before the first time, and apparently he wasn't even conscious. Conscious. He was trying to track down Iris and going back to the places he last saw her and this is that and the other. So it's like, so you knew what his motive was, you knew what his objective was, you had living bait, and you knew how you beat him the first time, and apparently his zombified mode was just too much for the team to handle on their own. What the huh? Okay. Second, what the huh? Okay, so as I had briefly mentioned, Jesse and Wally, we get to see them after they've been exposed to the particle accelerator explosion, right? However, Wally seems to walk away from it perfectly fine. Not a problem, not an issue. Jesse, on the other hand, she goes under. Now, first and foremost, when they discover her and her heart starts beating again, that I thought, like, Wow, so Harry didn't even think to perform CPR on her. 
He didn't even think to, you know, do some chest compressions or try to breathe oxygen in her. He just yelled at her until her heart magically started beating again. Wow. Okay, so, okay, even beyond that. So, what I'm curious about is, why is it that Jesse went under but Wally didn't? If, in fact, they now, they were exposed to the explosion at the same time and at the same place, they were right next to each other, and yet, yeah, Jesse was closer to the wall, she was closer to the room that the explosion came out of, that the dark matter energy surfaced from, but, so what, are... Are we to believe, what, is this supposed to create some type of question whether or not Jesse has speedster abilities and Wally won't? Or maybe hers are supposed to be greater than his or something? We don't know. But I really didn't, I, 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 I really didn't see the reasoning why they decided not to put them both under. Especially considering that we don't really get anything out of Wally the rest of the episode. He just sort of gets up, goes, and then we see him that one time when Joe and Iris return to their house. And then that's it. We don't get anything out of him for, for the rest of the episode. So I have to question, what was the point of that? Now, the reason why I'm bringing these two things up now, and it's also the reason why I'm going to briefly comment on... The last scene we got for this episode where pretty much what they suspected to happen last week came to fruition this week where Zoom has actually gone out and recruited the metahumans from Earth-1 and he sort of banded them together and now they're going to try and take over the city. The reason why I'm bringing all three of these things up is because when you want to talk about what for all intent and purpose is the second storyline of this episode, I really think... Zoom recruiting all of those metahumans, we should we really should have should have seen more of that. Like I would not have mind seeing scenes of him going around and actually because here's the other thing too. How is it that Zoom is able to get these metahumans on his side? We know in Earth 2, it was through intimidation. It was through fear, right? Like he was actually using leverage against the metahumans on Earth 2 for them to do his bidding. How did he get these guys? Did he get them in the same way? Because it seems like he actually rallied them on his on their own accord. They joined him because they want to be there. They want to take part in this sort of a hostile takeover of Central City. So how did he convince them to do that? You could have created a whole new element for his character if we got to see his ability to persuade other people. And that's and, and that's what I think. I think that should have been the second storyline for this episode. Zoom goes around recruiting the other metahumans in Central City. Meanwhile, Jesse and Wally both should have been under. They both should have been under, and we could have had the whole thing where they're trying to figure out how to resuscitate the both of them. Why? Because maybe conventional wisdom and modern science cannot fix what is wrong with them. Just like they said, when Barry, Barry was in a coma for nine months, and it wasn't until Eobard showed up that Barry was finally able to come out of his coma. So that really should have been the focus for Team Flash in this episode, trying to save Jesse and Wally, and then when Barry comes back at the end, yes, he can go ahead, hit him with that speed force, and then that's what, and then the the energy from the speed force that Barry harnesses is enough to jolt their system to get them coming back. That's how that should have been written, in my opinion. I think that would have been, I think that would have been more intriguing, much more interesting, and that would have had more to offer to the overall narrative of the season. And now I'm going to go ahead and spend the rest of this review tackling Barry's storyline in this week's episode. Because here's the thing, I feel mixed on it because I think conceptually there were some really good ideas. You know, this whole idea of Barry being separated from the rest of the team and because in doing so, you know, this whole episode, his storyline had to do with this internal journey. This emotional journey, this idea that Barry had to confront some of his fears, some of his hesitations, you know, all of these e internal conflicts that Barry has been suffering throughout the season in one form or another, these things manifested in the form of people that he know from throughout his life, you know, Joe, Iris, Henry, and then finally his mother, the idea that these internal conflicts are manifested in those people and it's almost as if we're getting this 
this d these conversations between Barry and his con and his conscience or Barry and his consciousness. So like that that in theory that on a conceptual level I think is really good because and, and, and we've seen stories like this before right um, we, we've seen this done in other series and other you know in films so in animated series in anime and manga I mean right off the top of the dome Naruto did a whole little mini story arc like that where the main character went inside himself and had to go ahead and confront these internal conflicts that manifest themselves in different forms that he was familiar with so we've seen this done before right so that's why I said like conceptually it's a good idea but execution wise oh my goodness mis executed so much okay and, and what am I talking about okay first and foremost the speed force should not be sentient the speed force should not be a conscious operating body that it, it shouldn't be that at all I, I think the second they introduced that idea into the series, that sucker just started sort of falling apart. Here's the thing. Now, I know that the Speed Force has been interpreted in different ways in the comics. I don't think it's ever been interpreted like this. But for the most part, for the majority of its history in the comics, the Speed Force is defined as a dimensional energy. It is... A force of nature like Barry says you know oh I'm having a conversation with the speed force that's like talking to light or to like gravity that's what the speed force is supposed to be it's supposed to be a force of nature now granted the laws and properties of said force those have been measured by different writers at different extents at different times I mean even Jeff Johns has gone on record saying that he doesn't really care to write the speed force because it almost comes across as ludicrous magic you know it's it's sort of like the force in Star Wars he compares it to like oh anybody any character who has access to the speed force could just do anything any type of ability why because of the speed force so so in that regard like Johns considers considers it sort of to be plot convenience right and to some extent I do agree with that to some extent but once again it's all about the way in which you write it and here's the thing with any magic like any good fictional writer when even when they're working with magic guess what there are laws to magic the magic has rules and so far so long as you create those parameters for said magic then you can go ahead and you can create conflicts for your characters that can't just be solved because of magic. Why? Because there are rules. They haven't seemed to do that with the Speed Force yet, and so this new interpretation of it, I gotta say, guys, what the hump? Like, how does that even work, okay? And we get a ve we get a very brief explanation behind it. I mean, when, when the Speed Force is talking as Joe at the beginning of the episode, he spoke so vaguely. Once again, to use enough to reference it back to Star Wars, I'm like, what are you, dude? Are you Yoda or something? Like, come on, we, we, we need some answers. We need some specifics. Stop being vague for the sake of being vague. Really, that translate to the writers didn't know how to explain this shit. Okay, so then there's that. And then this whole idea that Barry is within the Speed Force, but the Speed Force itself wants Barry to, you know, this whole thing of, oh, you have to catch that thing. What they were really going for is, oh, you have to sort of overcome these e internal problems so that we can bring, because because you're not in your right mind, Barry. Like, like you aren't conditioned the way we need you to be conditioned. So we're going to keep you in the Speed Force for you to deal with your personal stuff. So that when you're ready to go, we'll go ahead, give you your speed back, and you can go back to Central City and do what we need you to do. Like, even that, like that, the I, once again, the idea that the Speed Force is sort of rooting for Barry, I don't like that idea. And then, uh, and then, you know, even, they even present him with the choice, oh, hey, you can go back, but if you go back now without solving these problems, you won't have your speed back. Once again, I don't like that, that, that. That is too too much uh, Deus Ex Machina for me. You know, the idea that, oh, it's the magical speed force just going to come down and fix all your problems. And that's not how it should be written. The speed force should be written as this, this pool of limitless potential. But it is all, it is all predicated on the 
wheel of the wielder. The, you know, that go, going back to that whole idea of a sword is only as good as the hand that wields it. It doesn't matter how much power someone can actually get from the speed force if the speedster in question cannot resolve himself to do so. That's the one thing Eobar didn't have to worry about that Barry did in season one. That's the one thing that Zoom doesn't really have to worry about that Barry still has to in season two. The reason why he's not as fast as these other speedsters, because they're confident, because they know what they're capable of, because they have faith in themselves and in their abilities. And if nothing else, the fact that they're so blatantly arrogant about it, Hey, it works wonders for them because guess what? Both of them are faster than you, Barry, and they've beaten you time and time again. So what I'm saying is we really didn't need all of that extra stuff about the Speed Force. We really didn't. It was not necessary, okay? What I would have preferred to see, really, Barry should have went back into a coma, right? And all of that internal stuff we could have just had going on in Barry's mind. We could have had Barry suffering from the same coma he did with the first accident. And yes, the speed force is in his body. But once again, he's shut down. He's comatose. He cannot access it. So we spend an episode in Barry's head dealing with his personal issues. And then finally, when Barry resolves said issues, that's when his mind sends the signal to the rest of his body. He activates the speed force and wakes himself up. That's how it should have been written. And the reason why I say that is because I think this would have made it a lot easier for the viewers to, to follow. I think the audience would have been able to make sense of that more than what we were actually given. Because now, in doing what you did with the Speed Force, you opened up a whole other can of worms that has to be answered. So... All in all, that's going to go ahead and conclude my Flash episode review. I want to thank you all for joining me again this week. In the comments below, leave your thoughts on this episode. Leave your thoughts on any of the issues I addressed in this review. And let me know what some of your thoughts are based off of the preview we have for next week's episode. Because apparently, Laurel's back. Granted, I know that this is her Earth 2 counterpart, and I had already read somewhere in a previous article or something like, oh, yes, uh, the actress would be returning as her Earth 2 counterpart, but Laurel, by and large, is still dead in the Arrowverse. So go ahead, leave your thoughts for next week's episode. Any predictions, speculations, expectations, leave all of those in the comments below. If you like this review, please feel free to thumb it up, share it with other fans of the show and people you would think get a kick out of this review. And if you have yet to do so, subscribe to the OAW YouTube channel. Annotation is above head. And with that being said, this has been Larry Williams, OAW Command in Chief. I'm signing off. And until next time, peace.